Monday, grade 8 learners. How are you today? I hope you are fine. I am Teacher Mari and welcome to Science 8 lesson. Our topic for this week is about the hierarchy of colors in relation to the energy of visible light. So before we start, let me give you our objectives for this week. So for our objectives for this week, Explain the relationships of wavelength and frequency of light. And demonstrate the existence of the color components of visible light using prism. Have you ever wondered or been grateful whenever we see the beautiful creatures and surroundings most especially during daytime? Yes, of course! Our eyes help to see this and enjoy God's creation through the brightness of light from the sun. But how is light help us to see everything? So first, what is light? Light is composed of colors of different frequencies and wavelengths. And the arrangement of colors of light shows the order of the colors corresponding energy. In short, light is a form of energy. This time, let us learn more on the characteristics and the properties of light. Are you ready? What is shown in the picture? This is what we call an electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is the range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation and their respective wavelengths and photon energies. Can you read what is between of ultraviolet and infrared? Yes, it is the visible light. Now let us begin with the properties and characteristics of light. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Light travels in a straight line. Light is a transverse wave and does not need any medium to travel. The velocity of light changes when it travels from one medium to another. The wavelength of light changes when it goes from one medium to another. As we recall our lesson in sound, which is type of mechanical wave, a longitudinal wave that requires a medium to transfer the energy. While the light is an electromagnetic wave, a transverse wave that travels in a straight line and doesn't require any kind of medium to travel. Light can travel through space. Now, notice the wavelength in electromagnetic spectrum. There are short and long wavelength. The wavelength in the middle which is enough size and is also enough to view by the human eye is where the visible light located and also known as the visible expect light is actually made of spectrum of colors each with the different properties some properties of light include wavelength and frequency frequency typically measured in hertz is the number of waves in a specific time wavelength typically measured in nanometers is the distance between two points in wave Frequency and wavelength have both direct and inverse relationships. For instance, if two waves are traveling at the same speed, they are inversely related with shorter wavelength will have a higher frequency, while a longer wavelength will have a lower frequency. This is represented in the picture. One of many ways to see the spectrum of colors is to use a prism to split the light. A prism is triangular block of glass or perspex which splits light into its constituent colors. When light enters a prism, it is refracted. Each color of the spectrum is refracted by a different amount, meaning the colors are dispersed or spread out, allowing to see them. As you can see, the white light produces the hierarchy of colors in relation to the energy of visible light. It started with the red, orange, 
yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Now, let us test yourself. Which of the color has the greatest amount of energy? The answer is violet. Which of the colors has the least amount of energy? The answer is red. To take note, the velocity of light changes when it travels from one medium to another. And the wavelength of light changes when it goes from one medium to another. Each color has a different wavelength and frequency. Which of the colors has the longest wavelength? The answer is red, having 700 nanometer long. Which of the colors has the shortest wavelength? The answer is violet, 400 nanometers. The wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. Thus, red color has... The answer is... Lowest frequency with 430 terahertz. The wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. Thus, violet color has... Highest frequency. 750 terahertz. Okay. okay, good job. Therefore, violet color has the shortest wavelength, the highest frequency, and the greatest amount of energy. While the red color has the longest wavelength, the lowest frequency, and the least amount of energy. So the question is, why is the sky blue? It is common misconception that the sky is blue because it reflects the blue of the seas and oceans. In fact, it's the Earth's atmosphere and the process known as scattering that causes our skies to blue. As white light passes through our atmosphere, tiny air molecules causes it to scatter. The scattering caused by, by these tiny air molecules known as Rayleigh scattering. The tiny air molecules increases as the wavelength of light decreases. Violet and blue light have the shortest wavelengths and red light has the longest. Therefore, blue light is scattered more than red light and the sky appears blue during the day. Have you ever saw this? Yes, it is a rainbow. Rainbows are the result of the refraction, reflection, and dispersion of light. A rainbow is a multicolored arc made by light striking water droplets. Both refraction and reflection are phenomena that involve a change in a wave's direction. A refracted wave may appear bent while a reflected wave might seem to bounce back from a surface or other wavefront. How? Light entering a water droplet is refracted. It is then reflected by the back of the droplet. As this reflected light leaves the droplet, it is refracted again at the multiple angles. In a primary rainbow, the arc shows red on the outer part and the violet on the inner side. The rainbow is caused by light by being refracted when entering a droplet of water, then reflected inside on the back of the droplet and refracted again when leaving it. In a double rainbow, a second arc is seen outside the primary arc and has the order of its colors reversed. With red on the inner side of the arc, this is caused by the light being reflected twice on the inside of the droplet before leaving it. So let's have an experiment time. How to make a rainbow? There are many ways how to make a rainbow that will surely you can also do at home by using the materials you could have. 
I will show you and here are the five ways of making a rainbow. You can create a real rainbow outdoors. Pick a sunny area and turn your back towards the sun. Spray the water in front of you until you see a rainbow. Don't forget that the sun has to be very low in the sky, no more than 42 degrees from the skyline. Create a wonderful rainbow indoors. Slowly raise the glass of water in a sunny place until you see a rainbow on the floor. The sunlight is made up of different colors of light mixed together. A rainbow appears when the sunlight enters a water droplet and splits into many colors. You can create a rainbow as long as the sun is shining. Put the bowl of water in a sunny place such as on a windowsill so the sun can shine through the water onto the mirror fixed in it. Hold the sheet of paper above the bowl and try to capture a rainbow with it. You can still make a rainbow without the sunlight using a small mirror and a flashlight. Shine onto the part of the mirror that is underwater. Tilt the mirror until you see the rainbow on the wall if it's necessary. Bright white light is also made up of different colors of light mixed together. Did you know that you can split the light using a CD? Use your flashlight to shine onto the CD. The reflected light will make fabulous rainbow color on your wall. This is the end of this video. I hope you have learned while staying at home. See you next episode here in Science 8 TV. Keep safe always. Bye-bye.